This video is a tale of two drawings of the same reference photo. In the first drawing, the perspective is very carefully studied in the reference and then very carefully transferred onto the paper. It's not just the angles, but it's also the views, the lines, what's seen, the dome, foreshortening. All the perspective is applied as carefully as possible. The same accuracy is not demanded in the second drawing. The two drawings are then going to be compared and we're going to consider what is the difference, what is the impact of the lack of accurate perspective in how the object has been drawn. We're drawing Dome de Envoli in Paris, one of the largest churches in the city. Probably the most striking visual aspect of this view is the high perspective angle in this long, low building, this series of rooms, which occupies the foreground. Because it is visually so prominent, it's important to get it right. And extreme perspective angles always add visual drama to a scene. So we want to capture it correctly. But it will also potentially give us some problems with the scale of the great bulk of the building further away. So we want to make sure that these two buildings connect properly and don't cause any uh, visual discontinuities between the two of them. So there's a lot of foreshortening here to capture and that foreshortening is not just in the windows and the doors along the front of the building but it's also in these dormer windows along the top and it's also important to keep the perspective correct in all the people who are out the front, the people both relatively close to us in front of this building and also the people further back who are much closer to the church in the background. So now we start on the church and there's this row of trees in the front as well that we need to capture which are in compositionally an important part of this view and these trees are also in perspective. The leaves that are further away are actually from trees that are further away and so the scale of the leaves will change as they go from the bottom of the page up towards the top of the page. Now we're doing the base of the dome which is a double drum it's important that we get these perspective lines correct we need to foreshorten the height of the drum for starters because we're somewhat of a looking upward position that also means that these curved lines become more curved the higher they go up away from eye level so we need to make sure we increase the curve on this second circular line above that of the first and we also need to foreshorten the height more because the further away things go, the more they are foreshortened. Now we have a dome that's also been seen from quite a below looking up position. So we have to allow for that in what we see of the dome as well. And particularly we have to foreshorten this spire at the top. Even though in life it's a very tall spire, from this position its height is greatly uh, foreshortened. And if we don't get that right, it won't sit properly. And then we really just have this tree to do and want to suggest the fact that these leaves higher up are closer to us and therefore they're larger. So I use larger marks to help create that effect. And that pretty much finishes this scene. So now we'll move on to one where less care is taken with the perspective. I actually use this reference photo as a drawing exercise in one of the perspective lessons on my online drawing course. So I've seen many, many, many drawings from people taking the course of this drawing. So I've based my drawing here on a number of quite specific examples that I chose that various students have done. So I know these are real errors that people make when they draw a scene such as this. And so as soon as I finish drawing these errors, we'll stop and we'll look and we'll compare and we'll see what's the impact of not getting these lines correct. What effect does it have on the overall drawing, on the way we view the buildings and the other elements in the drawing? What, what cost does it have to our drawing in a sense if we make these mistakes? So we'll just finish this. And it was interesting to notice that it was much easier to draw this one 
it took about 16 minutes for this second example, whereas the first one where I was having to be more careful with perspective took me about oh, just under 45 minutes to draw, which was a little bit longer than it would have taken because my hand kept bumping one of the light bases. But it certainly is easier if you draw the second one. And I think it's partly because I wasn't having to spend as much time looking at my reference. Careful observation is always key. And if you look more carefully, it's easier to get the lines correct. But as I said, all the things I'm doing now, uh, genuine students doing their best have done. These are mistakes it's not too hard to make on our drawing journey. So here in our first drawing, basically we've captured at least the feel of all the elements in our reference photo. And the important characteristics is, is this high perspective angle here of the roof line. So we wanted to make sure we captured that accurately. It's these foreground figures that help bring this part of the, the scene, this low building here towards us. And then all of this is in contrast to the massive bulk of this enormous dome and drum looming up in the background. That is just enormous in life when you get close to it. I also really like the contrast of these trees here, this row of trees, and it is a row of trees. It's important to note that we can see the individual leaves quite closely here because these leaves are on branches that are more over us. And the further down here we go, the further away the row of trees is. And so these trees are quite some distance away. And so we want to try and create a slightly different silhouette and drawing effect to indicate that this tree isn't just one hanging mass all the same distance from us. And that's a perspective matter because perspective is the way something looks from a particular viewpoint. It's more than just vanishing points and horizon lines. But we do want to get our vanishing points and horizon lines correct. So as well as these perspective angles here, we have foreshortening. So because we're standing quite close to this wall and looking along the wall more than we're looking at the wall, there's quite a lot of foreshortening, which is the visual compression the further away something becomes from us. So these windows down here are much further away than these windows. And so visually they compress, they get narrower and the gaps between them get narrower the further away from us down this wall they go. The same thing happens looking upwards further away. There's compression, visual compression vertically, which is why the drum and the details on the drum look shorter from this angle than if you were to stand further back where we would see them more straight on. It also means that these lines, because we're closer looking up, become more rounded the higher they go. Again, if we were standing a long way away, these lines would be more horizontal or even completely horizontal. Particularly, this spire is compressed. It's a very tall, elegant spire in real life. And if we were looking at it side on, it would look very tall and elegant indeed. But from this angle, it's looking much shorter, a much stumpier version. But if we drew it taller, it would look out of place. It would look like it was going to fall on us. So getting all these elements correct is important. Even with these shapes here, from this perspective, we don't see the top of the dome. And so we see these segments as certain patterns that, for instance, don't meet in a point because they meet in a point out of sight over on the top of the dome that we can't see. So we want to capture all of these things for our building to look correct. The people we also need to capture properly. This is very flat ground. All their heads should line up. That's a very important perspective principle when drawing people. If the ground is level, the heads all line up, even compared to being very close or very far away. And we've worked to do that in our drawing as well. So let's now compare the effect with the drawing that we took less care, where we made many mistakes in the perspective that I've seen many people make in drawing this same scene. What's the first thing we notice? Well, just looking at those points we talked about before, we can see that this really great 
dramatic perspective angle is just not there. There is an angle, so we've seen, oh yes, this is at an angle, but we haven't taken the care and observation to see just how steep an angle it was. And we've drawn something that's much less, much less dramatic. And we've done the same thing with the line at the bottom. Oh yes, it goes up a bit, but this is the ground and you know, the ground is flat. And, and so we've drawn it a much more horizontal line than it really is. The perspective angle is this. And again, this combined with this gives us a nice dramatic leading of the eye in the direction of the church, which we've totally lost here. The other thing is that we haven't foreshortened correctly. We've been drawing just windows in. Oh yes, there are windows and doors. We haven't been counting. We haven't been looking to see how close together they are. And so we haven't had room to draw them all. And so instead of there being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve windows and doors, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're missing three. And they tend to all have a pretty similar gap between them, even compared to down here and up here. Whereas in our reference photo, there's a much wider gap between these two spaces and these two spaces. And we failed to see that. And by not capturing the foreshortening and not capturing the angles correctly, what's the effect? Well, the effect is to make it look as though we're much more in front of this wall looking at it rather than close to the wall and looking along it. And so visually, this wall now tends to direct our eyes off the page rather than down the page to the church. It also means when we go to draw the church and we come across horizontally, in our reference photo, this balustrade top up here goes into uh, the second dormer window. And I've drawn this shorter because I couldn't, I couldn't run this. There was no roof to run this into. And so once I become inaccurate in one section of a drawing, it makes it very difficult for me not to become inaccurate in further sections because I can't, I can't join things up the way they're meant to join. So I had to make this a lot lower than it should have been or else it would have just gone off the page and not have connected with this roof at all. And so my proportions now are starting to have a problem. Now I look at this curve and I think, oh yes, there's a curve. And so I do a curve. But what I don't look at is to see just how curved it is. It's not just a curve such as this, but it's a curve like this. It curves right round on the corners. And we can see that here because in fact it's an ellipse. It's not an almond shape, it's an ellipse. And so we have a very, very full curve on the sides in our real life reference photo that we simply don't have in this drawing. The other thing I've done is I've not observed how as each of these lines get higher, the curve becomes fuller, more rounder. I've just drawn them parallel to each other. And again, it's looking at something and seeing only part of it and not capturing it. And then with the dome, because this line is so shallow, we lose the sense of looking upwards at the dome. It's like more we're looking at it side on because we see almost a half circle. We almost see it side on. And that, that makes it look like we're a lot further away. But it also somehow makes the dome feel smaller. It's not looming over us with this enormous bulk that, that we can only see part of the structure because it's just too large to take in standing at this point. And again, we've not foreshortened our spire. It goes up a lot taller than it does here. It's starting to look how it would look if you were some distance away looking at it. And when we've done this tree, well, we've just done really what is our tree line shape. And it's the same. The same line down here as we have up there. There's no sense of trying to adjust the scale of our line to reflect that these objects up here, these leaves up here, are much larger than the leaves down here because they're further away. And we've made no effort really to define any, any tone in there at all. These people kind of look okay in relation to the building. But if we look carefully, we can see that 
these people are actually smaller in relation to the building. If these people were to be slid across, they would, they would probably only come up to about halfway. These are very tall doors. But if this person was slid across, you know, he, he would come up, you know, three quarters of the door, which makes the door smaller because we know what size an average person is. So by drawing our figures too large, we've changed the way we now perceive the size of this. So this is a much smaller building and then we've drawn more figures here that just don't line up perspective wise because the heads don't align. All the heads should be on this scale except for children. We probably read this person as perhaps a child who's just running a bit ahead of this person. Um, so we'll place them in a group but these two people just don't relate at all. If this person's standing next to the church, then this church has become suddenly a lot smaller. So I haven't taken care to get my scale correct of the people and where they are. All these things work to make my buildings look smaller and create a less dramatic view. If we compare them side by side, we can see that this is a much more engaging drawing. It's a much more dramatic angle. Our eye is channeled into the drawing. In fact, one of the things I liked about this drawing and why I used it in my course was we have these three triangular segments, which compositionally, I think, work really nicely. And they're not exactly the same size, but they give us three areas visually to see and to play with. And they focus our eyes along the direction of where the people are walking. I think it's a lovely composition and a lot of the visual interest is lost in this and these buildings don't really relate together. The scale of the people doesn't unify them, she makes them look inconsistent. And this building looks like it's to be much closer to us than, than the church is, than it is in real life where they are reasonably close at the far end. So what do you think? Is it worth making an effort to capture all the drama and all the information that correct perspective gives us, as well as capturing all the interest of the architecture and the architectural decoration? I'm sure if you're watching this, you think it is worth the effort. So keep at it. And remember, we usually draw inaccurately because we haven't yet learned to observe accurately. So if you haven't watched my videos on how to observe carefully for drawing accuracy, then have a look for them and check them out. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Well, this is my longest video so far. So if you've got to this point, you must really want to perfect your perspective. So look, all the best with that. And remember, as I said in the video, I think the most important thing is careful observation. I couldn't help but realize how much quicker it was to draw the one that wasn't so accurate because I didn't have to keep looking at the reference photo as much. So that's where I think we need to invest more time if we want to really nail our perspective. But as you do it, remember to have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.